Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna read a book called Small and Tall Tales of Extinct Animals. Nature has grown quieter in recent years than it has been before. Many animals have disappeared due to climate change, hunting, population growth, deforestation, and industrialization. If you ever wonder what they would tell us if they are still around, watch on and find out. The vast forests of the Amazon were home to several species of giant sloths, Eremotherium, Mylodon, and the huge Megatherium. They were ground-dwelling herbivores in contrast to sloths now, which live in trees. Sightings of giant ground sloths are still being reported today, but studies have shown that they disappeared about 10,000 years ago. If they ever lived alongside humans, it was in the distant past. The Megatherium was the largest of the giant ground sloths. It was 13 feet tall as it stood on its hind legs. The Megatherium lumbers through grassy plains and forests. To reach foliage high up, it balanced with its thick tail and pulled leaves toward its mouth. A Megatherium size wasn't its only weapon. It also had long claws. But this vegetarian giant wasn't aggressive and was far too clumsy to chase other animals. Over the course of several ice ages about 10,000 years ago, some large mammals died out. They included the American mammals, the saber-toothed tiger, and the cliptodon. The cliptodon was a giant armadillo that lived in the South American savannas and had a spectacular shell that protected it from predators. It disappeared in part because of the arrival of a new predator, humans. Along with its indestructible shell, the cliptodon had a club-like tail encased in bony rings and covered in spikes. They had a few teeth right at the front of its mouth, which it used to grind up leaves and tough plants. It would be an exaggeration to say that buffalo bills hunting alone caused certain subspecies of the bison to die out, but he did play a large part in the massacre of the bison. Bisons were hunted for their meat and hide, but also for more political reasons. American settlers were trying to starve the Native Americans in order to take control of their land. Before the first settlers arrived, there were plenty of American bison. In the 1700s, there were between 50 and 70 million. In the era of cowboys and the conquest of the Wild West, they almost became extinct. The Pennsylvania bison had a dark coat, a grayish face, and a distinctive beard. There were four subspecies of the American bison, the wood bison, the plains bison, the Oregon bison, and the Pennsylvania bison. By the end of the 1800s, these last two had died out. The great auk lived on rocky islands scattered across the Atlantic Ocean between America and Europe. Its extinction was caused by coastal dwellers, especially by fishermen, who hunted it for its meat, oil, and feathers. The great auk couldn't fly to escape its predators. From the 1500 onwards, great auks were killed in the millions, although they retreated to small, more distant islands. They were ruthlessly hunted down and finally died out in the mid-1800s. The great auk had a black back, a neck, and a wide belly, with a striking patch of white 
between each eye, and at the base of its curved beak. Sturdy and resilient, the great auk was a very good swimmer. It could easily spend ten months out at sea. However, it came ashore in spring to build a nest, incubate its precious egg. It just laid one a year, and look after its chick. The Falkland Islands fox or wolf, also known as the wara, was first seen at the end of the 1600s. It was very difficult to classify because it looked like both a wolf and a fox. In 1833, Charles Darwin gave it the classification Canis antarcticus, or Antarctic wolf. In 1880, the zoologist Thomas Huxley first believed it was related to the coyote. Then he decided it was more like a fox. In 1914, the animal was formally named the Cyan. In the same family as the Calpeo, a variety of fox from South America, only two types of mammals have been found on the Falkland Islands: this fox and a mouse. It's thought that the fox must have eaten birds, grubs, and insects—strange foods for a fox. People in the Falkland Islands haven't forgotten this animal. The Vara River bears its name, and there's a picture of it on the local fifty pence coin. The mammal was one of many nectar-drinking birds that once lived on a single island in Hawaii. It was highly prized by the indigenous people who caught and plucked it for its bright yellow feathers used to decorate ceremonial clothing. A single cloak. Could use the feathers of tens of thousands of birds. The new European and American settlers also hunted and trapped the mammal, and sold them to collectors for their feathers and their beautiful call. The bird became increasingly rare and disappeared in about 1900. Its cousin, the black mammal, suffered the same fate a few years later. The mammal lived high in the Hawaiian forest canopy, and rarely showed itself. Like the hummingbird, the mammal fed on nectar. It was crazy about the pollen from the Hawaiian lobelia. Its long, curved beak allowed it to gather nectar from closed flowers. A few hundred years ago. Passenger pigeons, which shouldn't be confused with carrier pigeons, existed in huge numbers. Their extinction in the space of a century is one of the fastest and most dramatic in history. The main reason, of course, was hunting. But at the end of the 1800s, the passenger pigeon was also the victim of a deadly virus. By that point, there were already too few birds left to ensure. The survival of the species. Scientists call this the extinction threshold. When there are too few animals left to reproduce, a species is doomed to disappear. The pigeon was the perfect shape for aerobatics and high-speed flying. It had an excellent sense of direction, which meant it seldom got lost on long migrations. The passenger pigeon's migration. Wasn't seasonal like other birds. It was all about food. Once the pigeons had gobbled up every last morsel in one place, they left in search of a new feeding ground. George is a member of the species known collectively as the Galapagos tortoises. It contains several subspecies that live on small islands, and each has distinctive traits. These tortoises had a peaceful life until the Galapagos archipelago was discovered in the 1500s. Then they were slaughtered by European sailors and harmed by introduced animals like goats, which ate their food. Their numbers fell dramatically, and some subspecies were wiped out.
Today, the last members of this critically endangered species are closely monitored. Although toothless, George has a sharp beak he uses to chomp on plant and fruit his stable diet. Like his male and female relatives on other islands, George has a solid shell. When he feels threatened, he pulls his head inside. However, unfortunately, as the last remaining Pinta Island turquoise, George has passed away in 2012. The Malagasy dwarf hippopotamus is thought to have disappeared a very long time ago. However, its most recent remains are less than 500 years old. Some people believe it was still alive in isolated parts of the island in recent centuries. This hippopotamus lives on in Malagasy legend and inspired the monster known as the Kilopilo Pitsofi, which still haunts the forests of Madagascar. The dwarf hippopotamus ate roots and fruit. To avoid activity in the hottest parts of the day, it ate only at night. At dawn, it would find water or mud to cool off in. When fossilized bones and eggs from Apiornis were discovered in the 1800s, many people thought that this enormous bird from Madagascar must have been the inspiration for the legendary rock. Its size would have made an impression on sailors who landed on the island, a bird large enough to carry a man as it flew. Today, we know that that's very unlikely. Apiornis was a ratite, a kind of giant flightless ostrich, known also as the elephant bird. It disappeared in the 1600s. With its small and stumpy wings, the Apiornis could not fly. However, its strong three-toed feet were ideal for running. Giant lemurs like Palaeo propithecus Megalatopus and Archaeolemur didn't survive long once humans came to Madagascar. However, they are the subject of several folk tales that claim they are descended from humans. They do look unsettling human, their postures, their grasping hands, and even their faces and expressions led the Malagasy people to believe these lemurs were able to think like people. There are still lemurs alive today that are descended from these giants. They feature heavily in Malagasy legends, and some are even treated as sacred. The Chacha Chacha was a solitary animal feared by the Malagasy, but the lemur was scared of humans too, and would swing away into the trees when it saw them. The dudu was a flightless bird related to the pigeon. It had no predators until the Europeans came to Mauritius. Because it was so heavy, the plump dudu was a clumsy mover and could not fly. Such easy prey was very quickly wiped out. The Dutch killed and ate doodos in the greatest numbers, introduced animals including cats, goats, feral dogs, and pigs, along with rats, which ate the doodos' eggs, drove the bird to extinction sometime around 1680. In the 1800s, the doodoo was simply a strange creature that had all but disappeared from memory. When Lewis Carroll made the Dudu a character in his book Alice Adventures in Wonderland, it became famous and still fascinates today. Many people think the Dudu is imaginary, but it was once very much alive. The Dudu built its unusual pyramid-shaped nest from palm leaves straight on the ground. 
The mammoth is an ancient animal that was able to adapt to periods of climate change by altering the length of its hair. About 15,000 years ago, there was a rapid temperature rise. The vast grassy plains where it lived were transformed into pine forests. The herbivorous mammals couldn't adapt to a new diet and became weak. It is likely that hunting also hastened its extinction. Woolly mammals probably lived in matriarchal groups, like modern-day elephants. The oldest female was the head of the group. Woolly mammals had long and curved tusks, which they used in battle for show and for gathering vegetation to eat. This animal is described as woolly because of its thick winter coat, which grew up to three feet long. Good insulation against the bitter Siberian cold. More than ten thousand years ago, stellar sea cow lived in various parts of the North Pacific, from Japan up to the Gulf of Alaska. When it was first sighted in the 1700s. It had already retreated to a small area near the Bering Strait, which humans hadn't yet discovered. The 2,000 sea cows living there were thoughtlessly slaughtered, and the species was quickly wiped out. The sea cow lived in herds and spent most of its time nibbling on kelp. It's not surprising it got its name. It had no teeth. Instead. It had two large horny plates with which to grind up kelp. The sea cow skin was very thick and covered in wrinkles, which is how it got its earlier scientific name, Retina stellari. Retina comes from a Greek word meaning fold or wrinkle. There are five species of freshwater dolphin today. Two live in the Amazon and two in Asia. The fifth, the Chinese river dolphin, which swam in the Long Yangtze River, is extinct. It was famed in China, where legend says that it was the reincarnation of a Chinese princess. When the princess refused to marry against her will, her father drowned her. This is how the Chinese river dolphin. Also known as the Baiji, is said to have been created. In the end, industrialization and pollution got the better of this Yangtze River princess. The Chinese river dolphin had very small, weak eyes, high up on its head. It navigated with echolocation rather than vision. The echolocation worked like sonar. The dolphin emitted sounds that bounced off objects. It found its way by listening to and analyzing the echoes. Aquatic mammals like freshwater dolphins and some whales have long, thin jaws. The Chinese river dolphin's beak is full of teeth, which are very handy for killing its prey. Long-beaked echidna belongs to the group of unusual giant animals that roamed the Australian continent about 40,000 years ago, when humans first arrived in this unexplored land. These animals gradually died out as a result of climate change. Many of them, 15,000 years ago, according to some theories, humans played a role in their demise. As soon as humans arrived, they relentlessly hunted these animals and lit fires that destroyed their habitat. The echidna is very unusual. Unlike the platypus, it is monotreme, an animal which is both oviparous, which means it lays eggs, and also a mammal, which produces milk for its young. The long-beaked Echidna look like a hedgehog, with a long muzzle and a sticky tongue for catching insects. It was as big as a sheep. 
The 13 known subspecies of moa lived for thousands of years on New Zealand's two main islands. The largest and most impressive was the 10-foot-tall giant moa, an absolute whopper of a bird. Moa disappeared more than 300 years ago after intensive hunting by Maori. These moa hunters used the tactic of burning down the forests where the birds lived. The moa, whose only other predator was Haste's eagle, was no match for an enemy as destructive as man. The moa ate leaves, twigs, and berries. Its long neck allowed it to reach food that many other animals couldn't. Like the ostrich, the moa was flightless. It had long, very muscular legs and razor-sharp talons. Today, the ostrich is the tallest bird in the world. Three centuries ago, the record belonged to the moa. Long ago, there were thylacines in mainland Australia, as well as on the island of Tasmania. After the first people, the aboriginals, arrived, the thylacines became extinct on the mainland. The Tasmanian thylacines lived in peace until British settlers arrived in the 1800s. These colonists decided to eradicate the animal because it attacked their cattle. They hunted it and destroyed its habitat. Despite efforts to protect it, the thylacine died out in the 1930s. Although nicknamed the Tasmanian tiger or wolf, the thylacine was neither feline or canine. In fact, it was a marsupial. Like the kangaroo, it had a pouch on its belly where it kept its babies for several months. The thylacine looked like a yellowish-brown short-haired dog. It had stripes rather like a tiger's and a tail like a kangaroo's. It wasn't a fast runner, trotting with a rather clumsy gait, but it could leap like a kangaroo. It's not known for certain why the pig-footed bandicoot died out but it certainly had to do with the arrival of Europeans in Australia in the 1700s. Its disappearance was probably linked to the introduction of new animals. Rabbits and rats disturbed the local ecosystem by eating the bandicoot's food, and foxes and rats hunted and killed it. The pig-footed bandicoot looked like several other animals. It had the body of a fat rat, ears like a rabbit, slender feet like an any loop, and a pig's cloven hoofs. The pig-footed bandicoot was active at night. During the day, it slept in a little burrow or in a nest it made from grass. Reports of how the bandicoot moved vary. One eyewitness said it was clumsy, like a broken down hack. Others said it could run very fast when it had to.